I know, I know. It's pretty late in the season to be picking the best touring bikes for 2020, but with summer soon arriving for many of you, I think you're really going to appreciate this information. I've gone through my 2020 Touring Bicycle Buyer's Guide and picked out all the bikes that stand out to me. You can get a copy of my book, which teaches you all the ins and outs of touring bikes, comparing over 160 models in the description below. Today, we'll be going through all my picks and I'll be using as many data points as possible to justify why I pick them. The cool thing is that even if you don't like my bike choices, you can apply this information to any touring bike you're looking to buy. So what criteria did I use to whittle down 160 bikes into just 12? Some people will argue that the bikes I've selected are not cheap enough, but it's my experience that you get great performance and reliability through investing a bit more in your touring bike, especially if you're planning on using it long term. If you want a cheaper bike, I recommend getting an older version of any of these bikes secondhand. I have carefully assessed the frame geometries of each of these bikes to see whether they are suitable for their intended use. Everything I've picked is stable, upright, and has the appropriate steering speed for the handlebar type. I wish I didn't have to talk about gear ratios so much, but all too often I find that touring bikes are undergeared. Bike designers often don't travel themselves, so they don't understand that we are climbing all kinds of gradients with a ton of equipment and maybe a few days of food too. Today, we'll be comparing touring bike climbing gears using gear inches. This is the diameter of the wheel times the size of the front chainring and divided by the size of the rear cog. With this information, we can compare bikes with different wheel sizes and drivetrain setups. All you really need to know is that lower is always better and ideally your touring bike will have 20 inches in the smallest gear for the road and less for off-road. These numbers are relative. A bike with an 18-inch gear will climb 10% slower than a bike with a 20-inch gear, which means you'll either find the same hill easier or you can use this mechanical advantage to comfortably ride up steeper gradients. The majority of touring bikes support a front and rear load and your frame is the medium which resists the twisting forces between these two points. When it comes to the handling, stability and general feel of a touring bike, we want our frames to be as stiff as possible without having the weight of a boat anchor. You can determine the approximate stiffness of a frame by the diameter size of the tubes employed. On a steel bike, we're looking for down tubes that are 34.9 millimetres or larger. Traditionally, touring bikes have had very narrow tyres. This is okay on smooth roads, but the reality is there is very little speed penalty to using a wide slick, which will give you a smoother ride on any back roads. The optimal tyre and fender clearance for most touring bikes is around 50 millimetres or two inches. That way, you can run a 35 or 40 millimetre tyre on the smooth tarmac, but switch to something closer to a mountain bike size if you find yourself on dirt roads. Kickstands are so damn useful when you're touring. In fact, I think it's crazy that so many touring bikes don't have them. I don't realise how much I use mine until I borrow a bike without one. A kickstand is just 250 grams extra weight, so expect many options on this list to be kickstand friendly. The Cube Travel is the most underrated touring bike you can buy. It's incredibly capable on a mix of surfaces as it has 29 by 2.2 inch tyre clearance with fenders. It comes with a lot of great features including a rear rack, rear mount kickstand, Shimano 27 speed drivetrain, hydraulic brakes and a dynamo hub and lights. The frame is available in five sizes and there are additional step through frames for ease of getting on and off. The climbing gear is pretty good too, at 22 inches. If you don't mind giving up some braking performance, the Fuji Touring is a killer bike for the price. This Reynolds steel bike is ready to cross a continent with its 36 spoke wheels, 27 speed Shimano gearing, easy to repair brakes and Vittoria Randonneur Kevlar tyres. The bike is available in seven sizes, so it will suit riders of all heights. The long chainstays and fork rake help to offer a long and stable wheelbase, and this is paired with the quick steering necessary of a drop bar touring bike. The climbing gear is 21 inches, which ain't bad at all. If you want a kickstand, check out the Pletcher Multi for a great fit. 
I'm almost certain you haven't seen this bike before, but if you have, I bet you didn't know this. The Diamant 135 is a rebranded Trek 520, but with better parts and a lower price. This frame is available in six sizes, it has a great touring geometry, and it's been recently updated with a larger down tube for increased frame stiffness. Like most European spec bikes, the 135 comes with all the features you need. Racks, dynamo lights, a kickstand, and the Brooks B17 saddle, which is universally well liked. The spec is great, with tough 36 spoke wheels and Shimano Dior 30 speed gearing with a 22 inch climbing gear. There is one glaring downside to the 135, however, and that's the funky handlebars. Fit a regular flat bar with bar ends or an alt handlebar, and you will love it. Here's another bike you haven't seen before. Vivente is an Australian brand that specialises in touring bikes. The owner of the company has been touring all over the world for over 40 years and as a result offers stiff steel touring bikes with all of the touring features he likes himself. A rear mount kickstand, a top tier rear rack, dynamo lights and even a mirror. These bikes come with a perfect 19 inch climbing gear and super strong wheels which even feature triple butted rear spokes. Wait. Why am I telling you about some obscure Australian touring bikes? Well, they'll ship their bikes anywhere in the world for just $190. That actually makes them a really awesome deal. One of the hardest choices on this list was a drop bar touring bike at the mid price point. The competition is stiff here. It was a toss up between the Salsa Marrakesh, the Trek 520 and the Kona Sutra. I ended up picking the Sutra because it's $200 to $300 cheaper than the others, but comes with the best components of the lot, including a 30-speed Dior drivetrain, a 20-inch climbing gear, TRP cable disc brakes, a rear rack, fenders, and a Brooks B17 saddle. It'll also clear 29 by 2.2-inch tyres without fenders if you plan on doing any off-roading. The biggest downside to the Kona Sutra is that there is no kickstand plate and they're kind of hard to fit to. For good kickstand mounting alone, you'll be better off with the 520 or the Marrakesh. If you're up for packing light and traveling fast, you can't go past the Diamondback Hanjo EXP. This bike is under 10 kilograms and depending on your body weight, it will be good to support a 10 to 15 kilogram load. The lowest gear is just 21 inches, so it should be able to comfortably ride up the steepest road gradients and given the bike weighs so little, it certainly won't hold you back either. While the frame set uses a modern, lightweight carbon construction, Diamondback has kept the part simple, fitting bar end shifters, TRP cable disc brakes, and a threaded bottom bracket shell. This bike will clear 27.5 by 2 inch tyres, it has three bidden mounts on the frame, and provisioned for front and rear racks along with fenders. My other lightweight touring bike of choice is the Salsa Journeyman flat bar. The Journeyman uses an aluminium frame and carbon fork to keep the weight down to just 11.3 kilograms, which is really decent for a bike under $1,000. You can choose between 700c wheels with narrow tyres or 27.5 inch wheels with fatter tyres. The climbing gear is a little high at 24 inches, but you can fit cost-effective Shimano 9-speed parts to the Journeyman, which will get the climbing gear right down to just 18 inches. The Surly Bridge Club is one of my favourite dirt road touring bikes. This simple steel rig is just $1,200. It has an 18-inch climbing gear from the new SX 1x drivetrain, and it will clear 27.5 by 2.8-inch tyres. For an all-round touring setup, you could fit some fat 2.4-inch Supermoto X tyres and fenders, and this bike will be great on a dirt road tour too. The Bridge Club frame set has got all the brazons you can think of, including mounts for a Surly 8 and 24-pack rando rack. If, like me, you prefer to have smaller gaps between gear changes, the 2x model looks to still be available according to the Surly website. The $1,200 Massey Giramondo has long been recommended by me. Not only has it got a super cool paint job, but it's running 27.5 by 2.1 inch mountain bike tires, TRP cable disc brakes, reliable bar end shifters, and 30 speed Shimano gears with an 18.5 inch climbing gear. I'm honestly surprised I don't see more of these steel bikes floating about. 
The Salsafago is one of the most capable drop bar bikes, offering 29 by 3 inch tyre clearance, a 22 inch climbing gear, and the ability to fit a roll-off 14-speed gearbox and belt drivetrain. The Fargo frame geometry is super upright. It's intended to be this tall so you can ride in comfort in the drops for long periods of time where you have the best access to the brakes. The SRAM Apex model is actually $400 cheaper than last year, and that's even with the awesome Salsa Firestarter carbon fork. Like many Salsa bikes, perfectly fitting frame packs are available for the Fargo in all sizes. The Canyon Pathlight AL4 is a standout in terms of value and reliability amongst trekking bikes. The highlight of this rig is the coil sprung suspension fork, which is nice and reliable and will add significant comfort and traction on the dirt roads. The bike has an insanely low 17 inch climbing gear from its 20 speed Shimano drivetrain. Chuck a handlebar pack and rear panniers on this bike and it will take you a really long way. The Koga World Traveller is one of the best touring bikes you can buy. And yes, I can justify this objectively. The Koga frame has very high attention to detail, incorporating full-length internal cable routing, a steering limiter, super smooth welds, and an abrasion-resistant paint job. You can choose from 11 stock paint colours or, as an optional extra, any custom colour you desire. You choose between a step through or traditional frame, which are both available in five sizes. The frame geometry is very stable thanks to the long wheelbase, but it's paired with an agile steering up the front, which tempers a heavy front load. The frame is optimized to be super stiff laterally, so you can load the bike up with a ton of gear and it will always ride without fuss. Koga bikes are custom built from the ground up using many of the components that I personally use and recommend. You can choose between fast rolling 700c wheels for the road or the 27.5 inch wheels that I use for off-road. These are also the strongest wheels you'll find on any stock bike. I've been using ride rims for over a decade and have never had a failure. You can opt for easy to repair rim brakes or super powerful and reliable Shimano XT disc brakes. The WTS comes with a full Shimano XT 30-speed derailleur drivetrain, which is as good as it gets for touring, or if you have deeper pockets, you can choose the incredible Roll-Off 14-speed hub. If you want the best dynamo lighting and charging, that's an option. A kickstand? No problem. Brook saddle? Sure thing. Like the Vivente, you can get these bikes shipped globally for 300 euros and in the process, save the 21% VAT included in the price. You will, however, have to pay your local tax and import duties. So do the calculations right because it might actually be cheaper to plan a bike trip in Europe, picking your bike up along the way. That rounds out the best touring bikes for 2020. It was super hard narrowing this list down to so few but I think these models really stand out in each of their categories. Let me know in the comments section below if there are any bikes that you think definitely deserve a spot on this list. Also, if you'd like to know everything about touring bikes, check out the 2020 Touring Bicycle Buyer's Guide, which teaches you all about the touring bike features before equipping you with the tools you need to compare over 160 current bikes. The book is updated yearly for free, forever, and is a product I am super proud of.